Hello, 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 everyone. I am so excited to be back with you today. My name is Catherine LaRange of Amida Dragon, and today I'm in conversation with Tamara Dables, the Executive Director of the Fort Saskatchewan and District Chamber of Commerce, leader extraordinaire and mistress of Halloween. And if you're on Facebook and you've seen her house, you know what I'm talking about. They literally had a dragon at their house. So this conversation is is perfect. And so really excited to be here with you today, Tamara, hearing about your story, right? And and you are as the executive director of the Chamber of Commerce you know, like I think a lot of women look up to you and think like she's got it all going on. She's got it all figured out. <laughs> and wow, do I have that pool? <laughs> <laughs> it made you. It had me reflecting on my youth. This this young woman with all the confidence in the world, knowing that I was going to rule the world one day, um, and really confident that there was nothing that could be put in, for, in front of me that I would be able to achieve, no obstacle I couldn't get past. Um, that young woman was uh, just a force to be reckoned with. And along the way, I don't know what happened, Catherine, like I, as I was saying, there's not one thing that I can recall, but slowly by sh- and surely, like little chips from that confidence and that and the, and the and the faith that I had in myself started to chip away, mm-hmm. to a point that when I was in my mid thirties, um, I was looking for a job. I was headhunting. I was I was searching in in the area for something where I could be of service and I could I could really have an impact uh, and you know job re- resume after resume after resume that was going out and I'd I'd been doing some volunteer work and I was a stay-at-home mom for eight years and it was a real privilege to, to be able to do that um, and in during that time I ran my own business and I I did uh, board volunteer work and um, and learned just a ton of things about organizational skills and time management skills and all of the other um like, you know, managing chaos that comes with two young children. And I, I was going back to the workforce with this incredible amount of, of passion and, uh, and, and skills that I could only have dreamed of beforehand. Uh, I, don't, I don't know how, you know, even my daughter, who's only 18, I look to her and go, wow, you've got it together. I, it's a hot mess. And I sure didn't think I was. <laughs> <laughs> we all have voices in our head and depending on where we're at in our journey, sometimes they're actually at the level where we don't necessarily even notice them. They're just kind of running in the background and Mm -hmm. it's not until we start to like, Whoa, what am I saying to myself? Right. And and we kind of like catch ourselves as this almost a sense of shock, right? Like, would you say that to your daughter? (laughs) I remember that too. You know, uh, we talk about our physical appearances, or and I remember thinking, like, I would, I would hunt down anyone who said this to my child. Mm-hmm. To how's it it's okay? Not okay. Yeah, it's not to okay. say it to yourself. Yeah. No. Yeah. So how how did you start to rediscover who it is that you truly are? How did you start to re-emerge into a greater level of confidence it it began with reading some good books Mm -hmm. it began by intentionally spending time with people i i wanted to be more like Mm. that i that i deeply admired yeah um it, it it slowly turned into those uh, you know, what I learned later on to be daily affirmations. Mm. But at the time I just felt foolish and thought, oh, I can do this. I'll just, you know, you look at yourself and you go, I can do this until yeah. you realize that you sure can. Yeah. You sure can. Yeah. yeah. And then you have this tremendous, because I've surrounded myself with amazing people. Mm. Uh, and I, and so I had a, an incredible, as my, ch- my, my kids call it squad. <laughs> I, I had I had great people in my corner and um, you slowly the one voice was a little bit quieter yeah and the other voice was allowed to be louder 
Yeah. Um, I heard this expression, like, what hill are you willing to die on? Mm -hmm. So where, you know, where in your life do you make a choice to, you know, it's, it's not worth my energy. Yeah. And so there, and those, those, um, those things are there a lot, but when it comes to, yeah, you're right. It's what's the hill, what hills are you going to die on? And what, what do you need to be able to have the good voice in your head speaking the loudest Mm -hmm. and, uh, and not let, not let the, the other voice, and which is always there for me, mm-hmm. um, yeah. creep in. That's yeah. an exercise. So uh, if I that those, those are important, it's important to me to keep that mo- that my my own mentality going. Mm-hmm. But the hills I'll die on are um, the causes I believe in, mm-hmm. the businesses we represent. Yeah, my children every day of the week, twice on Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> my husband doesn't. He's, uh, I, I would, I would fight for him all the time, uh, but yeah. he's, he doesn't need me. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's a champion on his own. Uh, yeah. and so, uh, and then I have my own personal causes that yeah. are, are, are deeply important to me. Uh, I, I started back to the workforce after, uh, after going back, uh, in housing, so I worked in the inner city of Edmonton and I helped, uh, I helped the, those, uh, those without housing find it. Mm. It was on the underprivileged. I don't really care much for that word, but the, yeah. Yeah. Those who needed others to help yeah. get us, yeah. you know, a hand up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is how you do it. And here's what you need. And the housing first, mm. um, initiative and, um, so, and children and education those those things drive me so mm. um from a personal standpoint i i will i'll always support those causes mm. so it's okay to pause and take that glass of wine yes absolutely <laughs> right? or you know, yeah. Uh, yeah you know an extra cup of coffee in the morning mm-hmm. uh, that's okay it's okay to not have to you know go from a to b to c immediately mm-hmm. but it's just mm-hmm. just taking that step and not letting go of the dream that that yeah. drives you. Yeah. And that's such an important point too. You know, I think when we, when we experience this experiences, when we experience those challenges and we grow into them, our comfort grow, our comfort zone literally grows as well. So we yeah. actually create a bigger comfort zone for us. Right. And so then there's that next challenge. And so we meet it and we, we, again, we stretch, we grow as a result of that. And in that process of growth, it's so important to actually take those rest stops and let, and let that new way of being in the world integrate and calibrate in your nervous system, in your brain, in your thinking. Because if you're always on the stretch, think about an elastic band that gets stretched yes. to, right? It's going to snap, <laughs> and, yes. right? And what yes. that does is it actually activates your nervous system. So you're, you're in that fight or flight all the time. You want to, you want to actually slack it off on purpose. So yes. be in the stretch. And then I bet most off. of us uh, in the last 20 months of food, like we're ready, all of us, anyone I've talked to, we're all ready for the like little slack. We've yeah. been stretched. Let's, yeah. let's take a slack moment, folks. Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, people climbing Mount Everest and one of my clients, her stepfather actually climbed Mount Everest. And she shared this story with me that as they're summiting, they actually go up and then they come back down a little bit on purpose to acclimatize to the altitude. Right. If they just went all the way up, they would die. So it's the same for us in our stretch, right? We want to stretch and then kind of come back down a little bit. 